class to talk with the instructor about it. They showed me that it didn't have to be that way. They showed me that I get to make my own choices. There is another way. That's the best thing CPR gives you. Another way. A better way. A healthy way. Sometimes you don't see it because you're in your own world, but they don't make you feel bad. They talk to you like a real person and they save kids from really unhealthy decisions. They tell the truth and they know what they're talking about. So yeah, my life was different. I started to choose the better way. I honestly don't know where I'd be or what I'd be doing had it not been for CPR. You want a career that creates experiences that are impossible to forget. By studying sports and events at IUPUI, you'll get hands-on experience in and out of the classroom. And with Indy as your classroom, there are high-profile events, sports franchises, hotels, museums, and large organizations across the city to engage, educate, and enlighten your student journey before you graduate. There isn't a better city than Indianapolis to get the experience you need to prepare you to handle any event, big or small. It all starts here. High school sports fans, welcome back to Game Time, to Pure Spirit, to Pure Sport. Welcome back to High School Sports. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and I just want to say, welcome back. This is Game Time. This is Indiana High School Sports. This is your IHSAA. You want a career that will transform your life while you change the lives of others by helping them live well. With a health or exercise sciences degree from IUPUI School of Health and Human Sciences, you will gain an in-depth understanding of the healthcare industry while preparing you for a variety of graduate and professional programs in health. And with Indy as your classroom, you will have clinical options within leading hospitals right in our backyard, as well as a degree from Indiana University, reputable leaders in the healthcare industry. It all starts here. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. After the Marine Corps, I was diagnosed with PTSD and became homeless for 15 years. Like a hermit living on the street, I just existed. I came to Wheeler Mission. Wheeler operates on a culture of kindness. Going through their programs reminded me that my meaning in life is to serve God. God set me free from anxiety and depression. Before Wheeler, I just existed, but today I live. Sprinkles if you got them. Jack's Donuts, find a location near you, now. Hey conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? Hmm? The conductor only plays his favorite. Woo! My kid heard that solo! Did you see my kid? Yeah, Come yeah. on! Good afternoon. My name is Jay Jones. I'm the commissioner of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference, and we're excited that you joined us for today's webcast. We're thrilled to have this relationship with Indiana SRN, and we're excited to show you the game of the week each week, showcasing some of the best small college football around the Midwest. We hope that you'll continue to watch and let us know what else you might want to see. 
You can go to www.heartlandconf.org to see stats, game recaps, and other information around the league. Until then, enjoy today's webcast. Ross, over the middle, caught touchdown! Dylan McKinney does it again, and he got wide open over the middle, and the Grizzlies put six more on the board. This time he's firing for the end zone, ball caught, did he get to the pylon, and yes, touchdown! by James Cobb at the 25, and that's going to be a first down and more by Duriel Moss Jr. I can't stand them, they don't want me to change, keep me where I'm standing. Rolling will be James to the end zone, did he stay in, and he holds on, yes, touchdown. Possibly my last dance, my last dance. I don't want to let myself An overall beautiful setting for week five in the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference. Welcome to Manchester University. Indiana SRN is pleased to be here for our fifth Heartland Game of the Week on HCAC.TV. It's the Spartans of Manchester hosting the Franklin College Grizzlies. Today's broadcast is brought to you by the Morales Group, building better futures one story at a time. Burtner Electric, serving greater Indianapolis and the surrounding counties. Piper Logistics, from warehousing to transportation, we do it all. And by Reynolds Farm Equipment, serving our customers and the community since 1955. Senior Day festivities just wrapped up for many players on this Manchester squad, hoping to get a win on their home turf as we get into the later parts of this HCAC season. Along with Sean Kroll, I'm Jarrett Lewis. Thanks so much for tuning in on Indiana SRN and HCAC.TV. One of these teams coming in off of a very exciting win in quintuple overtime. Sean, how about that? Yeah, it was it was quite an interesting game in Buffalo. Actually, they lost that game. Oh, they, you're right, they did. They did. Yeah, but they it's did. still exciting. That's I mean, the thing. you think about that five overtimes. Yeah. It, it's pretty. It's pretty interesting when it when it comes to that and, and how it plays out. But you know, um, you, you got you kind of got to you got to have a short memory, much like a major league baseball closer. Like something happens, you got to have a you got to have a short memory because this Franklin College squad is a really good football team, so they got to be ready to play today does Manchester. Franklin 3 and 1 in the HCAC. They're behind Rose Holman and Mount St. Joseph, who we're going to see in a couple of weeks. That could very well decide the conference championship, but nonetheless a tremendous season for Franklin and we this is going to be our second chance to see them. They put on a dominating performance when we saw them last on their home turf against Anderson. This offense is so high powered, so many weapons. They can run the football, they can throw it with Kai Ross. He has so many weapons on the outside. We're going to see a lot of that this afternoon again. This is a pivotal game for Franklin College if they want to stay within snipping distance of the conference title. Who knows if Rose or Mount St. Joseph might stumble before the last week of the season. So Franklin really needs to, 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 to stay on top of things and continue winning for a potential shot at what could be a conference title. And the last time we saw them, they played really, really well. I think Kai Ross had four touchdown passes, five at maybe. At least, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he looked really, really good. And, and Garrett Core is something else too. Uh, this is going to be it's going to be a good football game. So both of these teams coming off a loss. We mentioned the Manchester game going into quintuple overtime. And for Franklin, going up against a really solid squad in Rose Holman. We already mentioned how they're doing in the conference. So both these teams looking to get back on the right track. Both these offenses 
extremely balanced, although it seems the weapons are more uh, plentiful on the side of Franklin. Manchester gives up 44 points on defense to their opponents. What exactly can we try to see th from them? What's the game plan from Coach Jensen to try to limit the big playability that Franklin gives off with their offense? Well, I mean, we can start with one of the spotlight players of this game, and that's David Smith, the running back from Indianapolis, Indiana. I run the football, get first downs, and keep those weapons that Franklin has off of the field. If they can do that, if they can move the sticks and, and milk that clock some, and, and Franklin gets less opportunities, that, that works out well for Manchester. And uh, it could bode well in, in trying to get a W today. Smith, third in the conference in running the football. He trails only Garrett Cora on the other side of Franklin and Beecham Jr. from Mount St. Joseph, closing in on 700 rushing yards on the season. Meanwhile, passing the football, Manchester towards the bottom with James. He's seventh in the conference. His numbers not as impressive. Seven touchdowns and just three interceptions, but still, this offense can stay balanced. They're going to need some guys to step up for him and create big play opportunities as well. Yeah, he had a great game last week against Bluffton where he threw for 220 yards and two touchdowns. This is a squad that definitely runs to set up the pass, where they'll they'll pound it, they'll pound it, they'll pound it, not even with just David Smith, but with Jalen Love, and then they'll try and get you with play action. That's really kind of uh, the way their offense is set up. So they're not going to throw the football uh, a ton, but they'll throw it when it's important. What they don't want to be is in third and long situations, especially early in the first and second quarter. We're going to step aside. We'll tell you more about the studs on the end of Franklin College and their high-powered offense when we return. It's the HCAC Game of the Week on HCAC.TV. Are the Franklin College Grizzlies coming back out onto the field just minutes away from our opening kickoff. An offense that was shut out last week to the fighting engineers of Rose Holman looking to get back on track, and they have the guys to do it. Kai Ross, a winner of the player of the game earlier this year when one of our HCAC games of the week, and he is one guy that we will be certain to call out his name a lot this afternoon. Yeah, he was fantastic in that game that we had. Uh, against Anderson. He did throw for 301 yards and five touchdowns uh, against Anderson. And I'll, I'll be completely honest with you, when I saw the score last week against Rolls-Holman, I was stunned. And, th and that's the word I'd use. I would not expect this Franklin offense to go to put up a goose egg against anybody in this conference. So that was really surprising to me. Maybe they just all around had a bad game. I expect them to rebound really, really well today. And to complement the passing game with Kai Ross is the leading rusher in all of the HCAC. Garrett Cora leads in rushing yards per game at 115. And him and Ross have just been kind of joined at the hip ever since their high school days playing football. Yeah, playing at the same high school, Tri-West High School in Liston, Indiana. You know, six yards per carry, as you saw in the graphic there. Two games he's had this year against Bluffton, 37 carries, 226 yards. And against Defiance, 27 carries, 198 yards. And those two work so well together. And they do have some weapons on the outside. Another guy to watch out for in Franklin is their defensive end, Jairo Ojada. He, he is a man amongst boys, has a ton of sacks. Manchester has to be very careful in maybe chipping him with a tight end or an H-back to keep him out of the backfield and keep him off of Eric James. Spartans take the field on their senior day. They come into this 
contest with an overall record of 1-6, and 0-4 in conference play. Meanwhile, Franklin is 3-1, and one, like we said, trailing Rose and Mount St. Joseph, and 3-4 and four overall. Both these teams lost their previous game, so a little extra added juice on both ends to try and get back on the winning track. Yeah, 46-44 was the Manchester Bluffton score last week. There was a lot of points put up. And, you know, again, you go five overtimes, I am sure everybody slept well that night because they were extremely gassed when that game got over. But it's going to be a fun game here today. By the way, great uniform matchup on the, on the field today. I love it. Um, looking forward to this. And uh, I'm ready to roll. How about you? I'm ready to roll as well. The black and gold for Manchester. On the other end, white and navy going for the Grizzlies. It is Perfect venue, perfect weather. Couldn't ask for more. Just a day, or excuse me, two days before Halloween on Monday. But a good Halloween weekend, and we have you covered with football on Saturday in the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference. 62 degrees is what it'll be at kickoff as we are just minutes away from doing just that. Between the Spartans and the Grizzlies, it's the HCAC Game of the Week on Indiana SRN and HCAC.tv. Hey folks, good to be with you for tonight's game. My name is Andy Simpson and I'm a licensed IHSAA football official and welcome to Friday Night Football powered by Indiana SRN. On behalf of the 340 football officials, the IHSAA, the crew here at Indiana SRN, we hope you enjoyed tonight's game and more important, don't forget to subscribe to the Indiana SRN YouTube page. As you're watching tonight's contest, I'm going to show you a few of our signals that will help you better understand the information we are trying to convey. Touchdown. Safety. First down. Holding or illegal use of hands. Encroachment. More offsides commonly known. False start or illegal formation on the offense. Or a free kick scrimmage violation. Face mask. Intentional grounding, roughing the passer, clipping, illegal shift, illegal motion, illegal block, pass interference by the offense or the defense, delay of game, and the one signal we dislike and you as fans don't like seeing, unsporting. We'd like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight and following us on SRN. You can also tune in to the Football Weekly Show and Coaches Show every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. on IndianaSRN.org. Finally, if you've ever thought about becoming a IHSA www.ihsaa.org and click on the Officials tab or call the IHSA office at 317-846-6601. Now, sit back and enjoy the game. Captain's about to meet at midfield to get this game underway. Franklin College and Manchester University. A couple other games on the docket, as always. Yes. We are in week five of HCAC play. Defiance heads to Terre Haute to take on Rolls Holman and the Fighting Engineers. Bluffton takes the road trip down 75 towards Mount St. Joseph and plays them in Cincinnati. And finally, Anderson hosts Hanover College. We'll try and keep you updated with scores as we get that information today on the broadcast. Let's see what we got here. One, two. Coin toss, visiting team Franklin. They're going to be the ones to decide. Do you always call heads? I, I was always a tails never fails okay, kind of guy, gotcha, but gotcha. that may have to that may have to change because just not the luckiest with with coin tosses. You know, any situation I get into <laughs> that that where that's the case. Looks like Franklin won and deferred. So Franklin will receive the second half kickoff. We'll see the offense of Manchester come out to begin things. Eric James, the quarterback, and the rest of his counterparts. David Smith, third in the conference in rushing as a team. 
Manchester is seventh in offensive production at 21 and a half points per game. Fourth in the conference in rushing, eighth in the conference in passing. Overall, 21.4 points. He's sixth in the conference in first downs as well. Just a terrific day, a terrific atmosphere. Plenty of fans showing up on both sides for senior day of Manchester and the opposing bleachers on the other end for Franklin. A good turnout for their trip up north yes, sir. from the south side of Indy. And, uh, Manchester does lead the conference in time of possession, 32 minutes and 54 seconds. That's going to be vital today if they want a shot at knocking out Franklin. We'll see Derek Bolden to kick things off for the Grizzlies. Manchester will be moving from left to right. We are getting closer to kickoff in the HCAC game of the week. Thanks so much for joining us on HCAC.tv. Is, is that Shinsuke Nakamura's theme song I'm hearing? Is that something I'm WWE, supposed to know? Yeah. Uh, oh. Okay, yeah, I don't know. No? Okay. No. Yeah. You know, one of the things, too, we, as the kickoff comes, Franklin's defense averages giving up 172 yards a game rushing, which really feeds into what Manchester wants to do offensively. So it's going to be an interesting matchup here in just a minute when this kickoff takes place. Bolden has it teed up on the left hash. And a high short kick coming up to field it at the 11 for Manchester is Gabe Melvin. And Melvin does not reach the 25. He stopped at the 24. And there we go. Let's get ready to roll. It's actually Nikki Scott on the return for the Spartans. Those double numbers already yeah. getting the best <laughs> of us. They, as you can see, I mean, I'm not sure. As time goes on, you can see it as we go up and down the field. The home team always dresses a way more than the, than the away team does. So, yeah, there's double numbers all over this place. So here's the Manchester offense to begin things. It'll be a run with Smith. He gets across the 25 to maybe the 27. Gain of two yards. Charlie Moore always active from that linebacker position of Franklin in on the stop. Yeah, Charlie Moore starting this week for them. Their they're big time linebacker is Cody Wilkerson, number eight. Another run with Smith. Shotgun snap. Smith bottled up. He picks up three yards this time. So third down and five for Manchester. I think that's about as long as they want to be on third down. Anything more than that, you're going to have to throw the football. And Manchester will be much more comfortable running it on short third down plays. Well, we see James put it through the air. We will, looking towards his left, slant pattern. And it hits him at the chest, but it's dropped for an incompletion. So a quick three and out to begin things here from Manchester. The Spartans will send out the punting unit. It looked like the DB, and I think it might have been Darian Porter, got his hand in there and knocked it away. The, the throw was right on the target, but, but as he went to catch it, I think the Franklin guy knocked it out of his hands as he hit the ground. So... Nice three and out for Franklin, and they'll get decent field position here to start. A wobbly punt that bounces at the 41 and sails out of bounds. Franklin will have tremendous field position at the 42-yard line for their first offensive drive. Jared Gibson back to receive that punt. And that's important when that punt kind of goes short and you think there's going to be a lot of guys around the ball. You're screaming that hot word or whatever it is to say, get out of the way. We don't want it to hit you because that could loom large. Turnovers will be a big part of this game as well today. Our hot word in high school was Peter. All right. Cora. To begin things, seven-yard carry for the leading rusher, and there's a look at the rest of the starting unit offensively. You see Ross and Cora, but boy, their receivers are fantastic too, especially Gibson and McKinney. Those are guys that uh, Kairos looks for quite often. Peter, huh? Don't ask. Were you a punt returner? 
I was not. Okay. I was a punter, though. Oh, very nice. Swing things out, Cora. He's cut off. He'll reverse course back to the middle of the field. And actually able to come away with one yard. What could have been a loss of two or three. Defensively for Manchester. We'll, we'll call Huffman's name a lot, as well as Jamal Hubbard and Markel Jackson uh, in the DB areas. It looks like you know, you've got a lot of options here, third and two, if you're the Grizzlies. Read option, Cora bottled up, nowhere to go at midfield. Leading the charge defensively, Austin Lamar was in on the stop along with a couple other Spartans. James Matthews in on that, the sophomore from Pelotaca, Florida. I had to make sure I get that out. And nice response by the Manchester defense, especially at midfield, forcing a punt from Franklin. The punter is Dylan Boswell of Franklin. He stands at the 36. And a high wow. spiraling punt. Takes a bounce oh. and a good Franklin bounce. Down at the five-yard line. You can't do it much better if you're Boswell. What a punt. That was a spiral and it was like a nice wedge. Came down and hit and just stuck. Manchester offense coming back out onto the field after their three and out. And there's a look at the offense. James and Smith, we've mentioned them. LeVar Leisure is their leading receiver on the team. 28 catches. They'll, we'll see a lot of Jalen Love today, number 20. He's from Avon, Indiana. He gets a lot of carries as well. James looking to pass. Hitch route over the middle, caught by Cam Hall. Hall has a few yards. Looks like he got about four. There's, there's Ojada there at the end on the defensive end position. Sack master number two. Sack master, I like that. Second down, Smith stays patient. And then hits the hole, bounces off of a lot of tacklers, and actually looks like with a second and third effort has a first down. That's what they need. That's the one thing about Smith, too. He's that he, he's tough to bring down because he keeps the legs churning, but he has great balance when he runs the football. From Indianapolis, Indiana, and North Central High School. Smith again, this time off tackle. Pushed out of bounds on the far sideline. Smith, early dosage. A lot of attempts for their lead man out of the backfield. They ran right out of Jada there, which is you know something I'm not sure Franklin expected, but they were able to, to get the seal right there and let Smith get to the outside. Close to a first down. Second and manageable. Oh, I thought he got further than that. It looks like second and five. James fakes the give up the middle and hooks up with his receiver. That's LeVar Leisure with her first attempt, and he trots over to the sideline, appears to be in some pain, but a huge pickup on second and five. They like that little short crossing route right in the middle, and, and I think that's important for James. Couple steps, drop back, boom, get the ball out. The uh, pressure won't get to him, and they get the receiver across the middle in leisure. All the way out to the 38-yard line. They'll swing things out this time. Hall with his second catch. He breaks loose down the near sideline. Tackled from behind, but not after getting across the Franklin 30 down to the 27-yard line. Well, maybe Chuck Eric, the offensive coordinator, thought they expect us to run. Let's sling it a little bit and see what happens, and it's been nothing but positive for the Spartans. Pretty good hookups back to back for James, the quarterback, into Franklin College territory. Six plays on this drive, three of them have come, made first downs. Counter with Smith, he has a hole up the middle, bursting through. 
another new set of downs upcoming for Manchester after Smith got to the 15. That may be the case where they're kind of flipping the script and saying, you know what, we're going to pass to set up the run. You thought it was going to be vice versa. I did. You know, that's why I'm not a coach. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're up here. Right? Yes. First and 10 from the 15. James fakes it and then juggling drop. He was trying to get it to Peyton Fry. And there was that man, number two, Ojada. He was putting some serious pressure on James. Another look at the long catch for Hall. I wonder if that could be a telemetry review later. Very well could. 36 yards on that hookup. Four first downs this drive for Manchester. Looking for another one and maybe more into the end zone. Diving at the pylon and he's in. David Smith scores from 15 yards out. And Manchester's on the board first. How about that? Great start for the Spartans. Taking them the punt that got stuck way down at the five yard line and going 95 yards. David Smith, third in the conference in rushing. He picks up his sixth touchdown of the year in the rushing category. PAT is no good for Manchester, so the score sits at 6-0 with 8.53 left in the opening quarter. At Morales Group Staffing, we are all about building better futures. And during these times, we are working hard to put people to work. We are now hiring for hundreds of jobs with pay up to 17 an hour. Visit our website at moralesgroup.net or text JOBS, J-O-B-S, to 317-472-7600 to apply now and get hired today. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now, at IndianaSRN. Eight play, 95 yard drive for the Spartans following their opening possession that goes three and out. Offense, some sort of spark already after that opening drive. Maybe their best drive of this entire season. Best one that we've seen, that's for sure. Only took 301 off the clock. Something you're not used to with Manchester, but 95 yards capped off by a 15-yard touchdown run by David Smith. Extra point was no good, so it's still 6-0. A short kick coming up to field it at the 20. Brings things out towards the left hash and close to the 41-yard line. Returned by Derek Thompson. Good field position to begin things for Franklin College. Another look at the touchdown run. Great blocking and that stiff arm at the end and got to love the dive. He could smell the end zone. Full effort and the extension by Smith. Let's see if we get a response here from the Grizzlies. Now Ross trying to respond. He's looking to pass. Tipped, nearly caught. Going after McKinney across the middle of the field. A little similar play to what we saw with Manchester. You fake the run up the middle, look for that quick slant over the middle of the field. Looked like he wasn't ready for it. Like it hit him and he wasn't expecting it to be there. Some confusion. Second down in 10. Looking to pass again is Ross. Coming back for it on the hitch. Spencer Wright has his first reception and a good gain about eight yards. So third down in two for Franklin. This is where you want to be on any team offensively because you've got a lot, of, a lot of options here. And when you've got Garrett Cora in your backfield, that helps as well. Let's see what they dial up right here. 
Spartan fans trying to energize their defense on third and short. Will pass again for the third straight time. Ross steps up. He's got good legs, and he has enough for a first down across midfield. That is the benefit of having an extremely athletic quarterback. He hasn't rushed a ton this year. He's been sacked a lot, but that's a great play. Now hurry up offense. Trying to catch Manchester off guard, but they were ready for it. Cora goes nowhere. Only got back to the line of scrimmage. They look like Jaquan Williams. Is that... Yeah, sophomore from Marion, Indiana. They may have. Now I'm gonna go no gain on that one. What do you think? Looks like it. Devontae Moore. He's also on that defensive line. They'll slow things back down again. They're at the Manchester 49. And in motion is Gibson. Looking that way is Ross. Come back route. Fielded at the 40-yard line. Good catch made by McKinney as he's close to the sticks. And that'll make it third and about two. But quickly back to the line trying to catch Manchester off guard. Franklin brings in an extra tight end. That's Marquez Anderson. So double tight ends for the Grizzlies and Cora in the backfield. But they do look to pass down the field. McKinney has the catch, and he's into the end zone. Wow. From 40 yards out, Dylan McKinney ties things back up. And Franklin right back into the ball game, knotted up at six. 42-yard touchdown, and... Surprising on third and two. That makes me think that they might have gone for it had they not get it when you're going to the end zone on third and short. McKinney's sixth touchdown reception on the year, which is tied for second in the conference. And now a chance to take the lead after Manchester missed their PAT. But Franklin, theirs is good. 7-6 advantage for the away team. And a little over halfway through this first quarter. My name is Brittany. A little thing I love about the Egg White Grill is the toasty English muffin. It's toasted perfectly. It's just a little crispy, but not like hard crispy, but just crispy enough that when you bite into it, everything is perfect. <laughs> My name is Curtis, and I love the Egg White Grill because the egg itself, it's like soft and fluffy like a pillow. I, and I, and I, I would eat my pillow, but I'd eat <laughs> the, the Chick-fil-A breakfast egg white sandwich for sure. They say nice guys don't finish first. So maybe it's time to reconsider what it means to be first. It's about being your best, but knowing you could be even better. It's being present, but respectful of history. You sure you want to make that move? It's donating something more valuable than money. It's believing in yourself. It's something bigger. It's coming from different families. We're treating each other like brothers. It's not just being a man. It's being a mason. Franklin able to respond after the touchdown drive by Manchester, and they take the lead with a good extra point. Six-play drive that goes 61 yards. Another return for Manchester's Deep man, that's Nikki Scott. And Scott gets things out to, it appears, just shy of the 30 at the 28. Here's the touchdown pass. Looking, he's looking all the way and just throws a dart. Clean pocket for Ross. He had all day looking to throw. McKinney, no stranger to the end zone. Touchdown number six. And for Kai Ross, throwing the football this year, that is touchdown number 17. A couple of pulling guards for Smith, who gets tripped up after a gain of two. I think... 
Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't seen Jalen Love yet. Normally, Smith is in there for a few series, then Jalen Love gets a shot in the backfield, but they like what they're seeing. It's been a lot of Smith, another carry for him, following some of his offensive linemen. Gain of four yards for Smith here, so third, and we'll call it three yards. Jalen Love has appeared in every game this year. He has 75 attempts to Smith's 117 coming into this ballgame, although Smith has carried it about five or six times already. And here's carry number seven with a huge hole down the far sideline and across midfield. Opts to just step out of bounds at the 48. When Manchester has the football, they're winning the line of scrimmage. They're giving David Smith holes, and you've got... Ellis, Pills, Vaughn, Heinemann, and Williams up front for the Spartans. They're getting it done. Nice pull from one of the offensive linemen. Jacob Pills, 6'5", 330 from Titusville, Ooh, Florida. That's a big boy. Spartans with a lot of Florida men on this roster. Smith again, only one yard this time. Better defense from Franklin. You could see his shiftiness there. Somebody was trying to go low and tried to sidestep him, but another Franklin defender was there to bring him down. He is hard to bring down, and now Jalen Love is in. Looks like it given Smith a little bit of a rest. Smith, the breather. Second down and nine. Our first look at Love. Up the middle. He only gets a yard, maybe just half a yard. Well, Smith ran for 144 yards last week against Bluffton in a touchdown. But Love rushed for 58 yards and two touchdowns. So they do kind of have, you know, two-back system, even though Smith is the main guy. It is more of a run-oriented offense, although they are even in their yards per game at 155, both on the ground and through the air. Here's a third down and nine. Most likely we'll see James put it through the air. And he hits his man. First down. And plenty more out to the 31 yard line of Franklin. This, the, the, what they call the star player, Damari Newell there, 29 for Franklin, was coming up towards the line of scrimmage trying to look for the tight end. You'll see him. He gets caught up here, and then that opened it up for Powell to get that first down. Joseph Powell with his catch. We get a whistle and a timeout, looks like, by the Franklin defense. So 328 on the clock. Manchester threatening to score and retake the lead. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium out of the timeout. Back to the usual man in Smith, but he goes backwards. So whatever happened in that timeout with Coach Hensel, the defense steps things back up. I love Smith, and he tries to avoid tackles, but there comes a point where you have to put your foot in the ground, get up field. I'm not sure if these two guys are tangled up, or looks like whatever it is, they got it figure it out. That was Isaac Lawrence trying to fix his shoulder pad. We've seen that this year, haven't we, with the two helmets getting locked? Yeah, yeah, we have. That time, the shoulder issue, but they do resolve it. Clock 
winds back down. Second and 12. James, another quick hitter, but it's behind his intended target. Trying to hook up with Gabe Melvin. That's it's, a key. Well, go ahead. It's worth noting, in the receiving core, we saw LeVar Leisure on the sideline with his jersey off. So we'll make note of that, see if he returns to the ball game. That's the key. Right there, James had to get it out a little bit earlier than he wanted to, I believe, because of the pressure which caused him to throw behind Melvin. That, that's going to be an important part of how this shakes out today offensively for Manchester. Third and long for Manchester. Probably out of field goal range from here. Ojada, quick in there, and that pass may have been deflected by the pressure of Ojada, and it falls short of the intended target. So fourth and 12 with Manchester. They're at the 33. This will be about a 50-yard attempt. Shane McGrath was in there, too, from the left side, the junior from Evansville, Indiana. They both put pressure, and afterwards he was like, Excuse me, sir, official. I think I might have been held on that play. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look like they're going to punt. They are going to punt. And the officials are actually out of position. They thought there was going to be a field goal attempt, so there was two officials standing at the field goal post. That forces another timeout called by Franklin. They are out of sorts as well. So we'll step aside again. We'll come back with the Manchester punt. Calling officials cheaters or corrupt, it's not a game. Insulting referees, it's not a game. Threatening officials, it's not a game. Berating young umpires, learning the ropes, it's not a game. Violent language in the stands, it's not a game. Verbal abuse from the sideline, it's not a game. Screaming at a referee in the parking lot, it's not a game. Back in time to catch the Manchester punt. They're just out of field goal range. Trying to pin the Grizzlies back deep. This one over towards the Franklin sideline. It'll still be a decent punt to pin them back out of bounds at the six yard line. This is the by far the worst starting field position Franklin's had all day. First drive they started at their own 42 last one their own 39 now their backs are against the wall to six but you do feel better if they took it down and scored last possession job well done by Nathan Mason the junior Franklin on their last drive covered most of it with the 40 yard touchdown reception for Dylan McKinney they'll begin things with Cora has some space and a good productive run of about five. I think we'll see a heavy dose of core until they get out past the 20 yard line. Give themselves, and they're not backed up to the end zone. That's always a worry to drop back to pass and your feet are in the end zone as a quarterback. Plenty of room though to not pull an Orlovsky. <laughs> well, he, he kind of got out of the doghouse there when the NFL, uh, the other guy did it. That was Jimmy G that did yeah. it. Yeah. Cora again, just like you said, he's close to a first down. He may have enough. A lot of running the football early on for both of these squads. New set of downs at the 17. Fakes to Cora this time, and the reception. Bulldozing forward. He's going to, on the second effort, have another first down. Dawson Delape. They are going to give him enough for the first. 
Delape, a sophomore, six foot from Casey, Illinois. Casey Westfield High School. He's looking for his first touchdown this season. From one weapon to another, here's Gibson, jet sweep. Coming to us near side and make way for number 21. Seven yards on that scamper for Gibson. He can do it all. He's up there in the rushing yards as well. There's 40 catches on the year. Three touchdowns. Sixth in the conference in receiving yards. Check that yards per game. As for receptions, he's number two with 40. Ross, just a quick step back in that reception. Made over the middle by Jake Tharp. Everybody getting a touch in this first quarter for Franklin. That was an absolute dart over the middle. And threw it lower where Tharp was the only guy that could catch it. Watch. Not really much of a chance. And Tharp does a great, great job of shielding uh, the defender with his body. Franklin won't run another play. The final seconds will wind down in our opening quarter. The Grizzlies lead things 7-6 to six over Manchester in our HCAC Game of the Week, powered by Indiana SRN. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. HCAC game of the week with Franklin and Manchester on senior day. The Spartans currently trail. The Grizzlies trying to tack on to their lead. Going with the check down is Ross. Reception there for McKinney. Pass complete to number three, Dylan McKinney. Between Gibson and McKinney. One on the play brings up second down nine for the Grizzlies. They are both towards the top of the conference in receptions. Gibson far away from McKinney with his 40. McKinney with two, now has 19 this season. Cora gets wrangled down, just a one-yard pickup. But both in the top 20 in the receiving ranks. Want to know how high-powered the passing game of Rose Holman is. They have three of the top four guys in the conference in reception. Unbelievable. And we're going to get a chance to see them for the next two weeks against Hanover and then against Mount St. Joseph. Ross floats one over to Gibson, and he toe taps inbounds enough for another first down. You know, the, the defensive line of Huffman, Matthews, and Welton for Manchester doing a great job on the run. I, I wouldn't be surprised, though, if at this point Kaleo Hill starts to maybe bring some pressure with the linebackers to throw uh, Ross off of his rhythm because when he drops back to pass, he's got a lot of time. No pressure applied at all for Ross when he's throwing. And then Cora, he stays patient. He goes towards the left side of the offense. And that's a five-yard gain for Cora, who is already close to double-digit carries in this first half. Him and Smith both. Love how they just read the hole, take what the defense gives them, both hands on the football. Getting the full play at the sideline. The 
Backup quarterbacks with the headsets on, doing all the signals for Ross. New back next to Ross in the backfield is Cam Jennings. We get a whistle, and that's going to be the third timeout wow. called in this first half by Coach Hensel. So they are out of timeouts, seem to be out of sorts on the offensive side now. And we will take a break. Mind you, this broadcast is copyrighted by Indiana SRN and the HCAC for the private use of our audience. The use of pictures, video, and audio without the express written permission of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference is prohibited. Second and six. Grizzlies use their third and final timeout. It will be Jennings with his first attempt, and here he goes, bursting through, breaking a couple tackles, and taking a guy with him inside the 20-yard line. A huge pickup for Cam Jennings. That's exactly what you're looking for in your backup running back. Get, give your main guy a little bit of a rest, but you can break one off like that. You are living right. He just kept shedding guys. Trying to take him down by the jersey was Castro. Will they go to Jings again? They won't in the flat. Ross took a hit after that completion to Spencer Wright. And Wright, it took a couple of guys to bring him down. 11th play of that drive. Ross, his QBR right now is over 200. He's 10 of 11. Is that good? For 100 yards, I, yeah, that's pretty good. He's hooked up with... Now five different receivers. Cora is back in there. In between the hashes, breaking tackles into the end zone. Grizzlies extend their first half lead. Garrett Cora finds the black turf. That young man will not be denied. He looked like he was stopped a couple of times, kept those legs churning, and got into the end zone. Make it an eight-point game here. Baldwin. With the extra point. Good snap, good hold, and a good kick. It's now 14-6. Grizzlies in the second quarter. Hard to believe this team was shut out last week. Franklin, that is, against Rose Holman. Now they have 14 first-half points. Garrett Cora from 13 yards out was able to find the end zone. 12 plays, 5.07 on the clock, and like you said, 94 yards until they got pinned down deep in their own territory. Nice response. Quite the drive. Franklin. Yeah, it was. That was impressive. Manchester looking for a response. We mentioned it appears they're going to be without their top receiver, LeVar Leisure. He was on the sideline with some wrap around his shoulder. So next man up mentality for Manchester. Return is dropped but picked back up. 
And the speedster coming away with something out of it is Scott. Manchester will begin things at their own 29-yard line. You see that look at it. He gets hit there, keeps going, hit again, the end zone for a touchdown. You know that kickoff return is interesting because sometimes you see it again. With that little fumble, sometimes the, the kickoff team will just blink for a second, and that's all you need to pick it up. And if they have to reset as to what's going on in their brain, zip, you're buying. So good return. Love will begin this possession as the lead back. Four yard carry for him. So far it's been a lot of David Smith running the football. Nine carries for Smith, already 61 yards rushing. You, you need that right now because the most important thing for Manchester is to stay on the field long enough to give their defense a breather. There have been two quick drives for Franklin. They need that rest to reset and, and figure out what they're going to do. Showing some pressure. It's another give to Love. And meeting him with full force from his linebacker position, Carter Edney. One of the guys in on the stop. So one yard pickup, third down and four. Just like you said, a crucial third down here to try and extend this drive as long as you can. Yeah, your defense desperately needs a breather. This is a big play for the Manchester offense. James in the shotgun. It'll be Love. He's tackled for a loss. In on the stop for Franklin. Ojada was there. Ojada has been a menace everywhere making plays for this Franklin defense. Yeah, he and Edney were both there to stop it. Edney, a freshman from Dana, Indiana, North Vermilion High School. So down to down. Right there. So three and out is not what you wanted. Low end over end punt. It's actually picked up by Gibson. He'll only come away with a yard from it. And guess what I heard on the Franklin sideline? What's that? Peter. Oh, you did? I did. It was a bad punt. That's some good ears. I could have hit any of the Franklin guys on the return, but they stayed away. There, there's nothing worse as a punter when you're trying to, to flip the field a little bit and getting a shankopotamus out there. And, ooh. I think I saw, I'm, not, I'm trying to remember where I saw it, if it was college or pro, it was like a four-yard punt. It was shanked so bad. Down, down, right there. That's what I want, right there. How about the three safeties that were scored in that one college game? Because yeah of the bad long snapping duties. That was in a college game. I can't remember who it was, but incomplete pass trying to hit Spencer Wright was Ross. That had to hurt. That, that's a rough one. Not one, not two. But three. But three. Well, that's kind of like the pitcher for the Marlins that got three balks and one at bat yeah. and <laughs> balked in a run. <clears throat> You don't see that every day. No. World Series game two tonight after the fight in Phils came back. How, How about, about that? that? Huh? Yeah. Down 5-0. Ross. Here's Gibson in the flat. Good open field tackle made by Scott. Great open field tackle because Wright was out there on his man, got a good block. If he doesn't make that tackle, he could still be running. We've been giving props to Scott on the kickoff returns, but it has been Melvin it has, yeah. that has been the one returning. Both those guys wearing number two, so we... It's the pink one. The pink one's Scott. Yeah, yeah. We know pink is on Scott. Third down and eight. Gibson, the motion man. Ross flushed out, keeping his eyes downfield, but running out of room, and he does hook up with his man, and he was in bounds. Wow. That's Gibson. Gibson almost boxing out 
the DBs behind them. Two of them. And what a great play there by Ross. Just patience, time, time, time. Sticking with it, too, not just throwing it away or throwing it in a dangerous spot. My goodness. That's just a wonderful play from a sophomore. To the 44, Cora. Get back to the ground and pound. Five-yard gain for Cora. His numbers in comparison to Smith so far. Cora's over 40 yards rushing. Smith at 60. There's the offensive line giving that push. I love it. We can see on that replay, once Cora hits his offensive lineman, he disappears, but then the pile keeps moving, and he's in there somewhere. That, that's fantastic as a running back. Ross looking over the middle of the field and trying to throw up the one hand to snag it down. Jean Winburn. This is what Franklin's pretty good at is you can run it so well with Cora, bring those linebackers up, and then you look for kind of the home run hit ball right over the middle of the field. He got third and five here. Ross wanted to step up, but that was closed off, and now he'll get the first down with his legs. Tremendous vision from the sophomore quarterback to pick up their 10th first down of the afternoon. He did look to the right side because Cora was an outlet for him, but I think he was concerned it might get batted down. Smart play there by Ross. Tremendous dual threat quarterback. He's got the Franklin offense into Manchester territory. Looking to pass again. Over the middle of the field into coverage, and Gibson nearly came down with it, but good secondary play for Manchester. Castro was in there, but now they have a man down, and that might be Scott. Oh, we've been talking about wearing number two and wearing the pink. We will hopefully we get, see we get Scott. we got a score update as well, too. Yeah, let's go to that. Halftime, Mount St. Joseph 49, Bluffton 7. That's the only one I got right now. Telemetry Sports <laughs> replay from one of the plays earlier. This was the 36-yarder for Cam Hall. And that set up the scoring drive for Manchester. He got up over 19 miles an hour. That's pretty good. Yeah, we've seen around 17 and 18 at the high school level, but for the college level, you can see even faster than that. And we want to thank our friends at Telemetry Sports for providing us those types of replays. For more than six years, Telemetry Sports has been working with the NFL and multiple college football teams as a data and technology provider. Player speeds and acceleration that they are providing is generated using computer vision, the same technology as autonomous vehicles. As you watch these players, keep in mind that over 18 miles per hour is very fast, and he hit 19. And we'll look at it yet again. In super slow mo. <laughs> Estimated 44.73. Oh, yeah. That's a lot faster wow. than either of us. So, yeah. Scott is up on the ground for just a few minutes, but good to see him. He's walking over to the sideline on his own power. It's not saying much if you're faster than me. By the way, Manchester has a cross-country championship. Uh, their, their men won the cross-country championship. Hanover women. There's a lot of stuff going on in the HCAC with cross-country. We have football, of course, and there's volleyball, soccer, jam-packed HCAC action. I'll let you know about some more of those events here shortly. Cora keeps the drive going after the injury. Hopefully we can see Scott return for that Manchester defense. He has been 
a nice bright spot in that secondary. Sincora in motion. They'll swing it out to him, but the pass is over his head. They ruled a fumble. Backwards pass, and Cora goes backwards for about 10 yards, actually, on that play. Yeah, that one's so close that you got to keep playing through the whistle, and you didn't hear it. And instead of trying to gain yards and at least get a field goal off, this puts them back to the 45-yard line, does Franklin, so they'll have to punt. Second punt of the day for the Grizzlies. This is Boswell standing at the 41, a low snap, but he does get it off. A sidewinder that's fielded up at the, let's say the 17 yard line. And there, there is go. that action that we were talking about. Next Friday, next Saturday and Sunday actually, that's the Volleyball Conference Championship on HCAC.TV. Men's soccer, six teams remain in that one for next Saturday. Same thing for women's soccer. We'll have all that action for you on HCAC.TV. Make sure to follow us on Twitter. Check out our website so you can see the upcoming schedule of all the Heartland athletic events. Yes, sir. Spartans take over with 5.35 left in the first half. James Ooh. nearly jumped. Good defense on the coverage was Gervasio Mitchell. That was close. Spartans would love a good drive here. At the very least, you can pin Franklin back deep in their own side of the ter own side of the field to prevent them from putting up any more points. But you want your points yourself. Yeah. If you're Manchester. If you don't get any points here, the biggest thing you want to do is drain that clock to, to not give Franklin any time. Smith fighting his way forward. He's going to have, it looks like, another first down. Especially knowing that Franklin has no timeouts left. So you just keep that clock running. They can't stop it. Offensive line working hard to create these holes for Smith. Boy, I would not want to be that umpire, especially with Smith coming through that hole like that. Ooh. Coming right at you. Smith will bounce things out towards the outside. A flag comes flying in. Is this our first penalty? It is. Our referees have had a quick and quiet afternoon thus far. There's also an injured Grizzly down on the field. Can't make out who it is yet. Meanwhile, appears the Manchester offense will have to trek back 10 yards. Holding on, Manchester. Second down. Looks like he's getting up. Darian Porter, junior from Evansville, bossy. Good to see Porter is okay. Second down and 10 here for Manchester. James throwing the football so far, just four of nine. They've ran it 15 times over their nine passes. And they will pitch it here to Smith, but he's immediately cut off and sent <laughs> backwards. A loss of three, maybe four. Leading the charge for Franklin, Bo Hess. Hess, a sophomore from Martinsville, Indiana. That is... He had three and a half tackles for loss coming into the game. You can add one to that. And a couple other Grizzlies there. They, it looks like they read the play pretty well, and they were jumping all over it. Third now you got, down and yeah, long. Third and long. And still a ton of time on the clock. They'll most likely put it through the air right here. James 
into the flat, and it's too far out of the reach of Cam Hall. So that stops the clock at 4.06. Grizzlies will send Gibson back on the return, and we'll see another punt on its way from Manchester. Plenty of time for Franklin, even though they have no timeouts left with the field position they're going to get. On this type of setup, too, see if you can get the snapper in your picture. And over in punt, Gibson calls for the fair catch right at the 50-yard line. Prime position for the Grizzlies to try and tack on to this first half lead. So far, they're playing spoiler to the senior day of Manchester. Yes, they are. And again, both teams trying to bounce back from losses last week. A 40-plus point drop by Franklin to Rose. Well, you can see Mount St. Joseph is going to tack on another W as they're up, you know, 42 points at halftime. They had their backup quarterback in in the second quarter, Tyler Prather. So their Mount St. Joseph is going to go to 5-0. and Mount St. Joseph averages 45.7 points per game, which is good for first in the conference. Tack on some more yards here after the face mask called on Manchester. Yeah, it's a 15-yarder too. And Rose, who's second in scoring, is at 35 points a game. No score yet from that game, which is defiance at Rose Holman. But you're, if you're Franklin, you're only one game behind. You got to keep pace, and you got to win on both sides too. The yes. two offenses are towards the top, but also Rose and Mount St. Joseph rank first and second on the defensive end. <laughs> Actually, you look at the top four. That's a recipe for it's, success. It's is it identical. Not? Yes, yeah. Hanover's third in both. Franklin is fourth in both. Well, and there you go. Top four teams in the league: Mount St. Joseph, Rose, Franklin, Hanover. Franklin does give up more points to their opponents than they do <laughs> with their own offense. But right now, they're helping their cause in this first half. Ross wanting to step up, and now he's forced to run it again. Tremendous legs from the sophomore, avoiding guys Ooh. at all costs. Nearly a late tackle made by Manchester, but Ross goes from the 29-yard line inside the 10, and they mark him out at the 10. Just incredible pocket presence here by Kai Ross, sensing the pressure, knowing which way to go, and then getting just a ton of yardage. Manchester calls a timeout, looking for a huge stop here. You're good at making big announcements. We're having a go! <laughs> We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. Inside three minutes left to play in the first half. At the very least, Manchester trying to force a Franklin field goal and have enough time for themselves to score before the end of the half. They will wisely put it on the ground with Cora. Cora with just a yard. Was that Manchester's first time out that they took? It was. Okay. Franklin doesn't have any. I'm surprised they didn't take one there. Because Franklin can take down another 18 seconds. They could snap it right before it reaches 210 on the game clock. If they want to, but they will snap it quickly. Ross, 
quick hitter, throws it off of his back foot, and that could have been a touchdown. If he yeah. does snap it to his tight end, Neely. I kind of liked Jared Gibson. He was he kind of came in motion and then was the inside receiver there. He was more open. I was surprised Core didn't go towards him. Incomplete pass does help out the Spartans. Stops the clock at 2.15. It's third and goal. Franklin's at the eight. Ross immediately has to maneuver towards his right. Guy's running in from behind him, and he has nowhere to go with it. Throws it away. Fourth and goal. Looks like the field goal team's going to come on here. Nice call dialing up the pressure from Manchester to force Ross out of the pocket and run for his life, essentially. <clears throat> this is Bolden. On the season, he is 9 of 12 in his field goals. A 25-yarder. doesn't look like you're... Uh, that it is a good snap. Good hold, and the kick splits the uprights. Franklin now leads 17 to six over Manchester Spartans, trying to tack on some more points of their own. Your hauling or moving project has arrived, and College Hunks Hauling Junk and Moving has you covered. Honest, uniform. Nice. Knowledgeable. Service. Calling trunks, hauling junk and moving. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Six-play drive that goes 42 yards. It does take a decent amount of time off the clock. Manchester, though, two-minute offense, two-minute drill. As they now trail by 11. Baldwin from the 35. Long way to go for it and grab it. On the return, now heading backwards. Dangerous territory on the return, only able to get it to the six yard line is Duriel Moss Jr. So 94 yards is the track for Manchester if they are looking to score a touchdown before the end of the half. Man, and again, you know, on a previous punt, or maybe it was a kickoff, dropped the ball, but then got some great yardage in return there though being stuck in that corner trying to avoid Franklin coming across the field. I mean, he ran 50 yards to, to gain mm. two. So far, James it hasn't been a very good game passing the football. He's just four of 10. We'll start things off with a run and Smith. Smith gets the end zone out of the air out from behind themselves and he's across the 15 to the 17. It does stop the clock for the time being. But now it continues to whine after the chains get set. He's just tough to bring down. You got to get him low and hang on. Wasting a lot of time here though is Manchester in between plays. Again, another run with Smith through the middle. Bursting through that hole. That's been their game. In between the tackles, Smith has slithered through the hole and punched it through another first down. And that's, you know, that, that's awesome. He's been doing a great job. But, man, when you got to go 96 yards, 94 yards in under two minutes, that's a tough call. So they run it again here. Close to 60 seconds to play. James. 
flushed out and just throws it away. Good move. Good good move by James. Pressure is coming from everywhere. Just get rid of it. Isaac Lawrence was in hot pursuit. And it looked like Smith had to be the one to pick up Ojada off the edge, and that is a heavy task. Mm -hmm. You know, Jada 6'4", 260, and runs like a deer. From Carmel High School. And you can see him right there, number two. He's just put together. We have a snap in that shot. Tremendous edge rusher for the Grizzlies, trying to put a halt to this drive moving forward for Manchester. Deep throw down the field, an acrobatic jump ball. Is it holding? It is. Making the catch for Manchester is Joseph Powell. And what a throw by James. Put it on the money. Gervasio Mitchell has great coverage, but notice the key. Doesn't turn his head around to see where the football is, which allows them to make the catch. Timeout called by Manchester, so they'll stop the clock. 46.4, a huge pickup. On the completion, they get it all the way down to the 34-yard line. Clean pocket for James and a quick release. Great ball. But as a DB, if you can't get your head around and see where the football is, that gives the wide receiver an advantage knowing where to go get the ball at. Now the key is 46.4. How, how close do you need to get and to be in field goal range? And you've got that last timeout ready to go. You think they'll run it here? The playbook is still fairly open. You've had such success too. With the end zone at your back and Smith able to get things out for you. He is in the backfield. James towards the sideline. Nice six to seven yard gain on the quick hitter to Peyton Fry. That was a really good play. Huh? <laughs> okay. So they got a first down before on the big play. Not a first down quite yet. Second and four. That play took just four seconds off the game clock too. Looking to get it out quickly again is James. This is Powell with another catch. But better defense to bring him down for Franklin. Damarion Newell. Got to work quickly. Not a first down either on that play. So the clock continues to go down. Third and one. Ojada almost brought James down, and he has no option but to throw it away. Boy, yeah. picking up that first down there was was killer. Or not picking it up. I yeah, say. yeah. Well, not leading the, the you know Powell enough to be able to get out of bounds on that one play. And great tackle. On the, on the flip side for Franklin. Now you're kind of stuck in no man's land. How good is your kicker? Do you want to try and see if he's got the leg to make it, or you just want to try and throw it in the end zone for a Hail Mary? From here, it'd be about a 42-yarder. But do they have enough time to run for the first down, get back to the line of scrimmage, and run another play? They do have another timeout to use also. But you got to get the first down here. Smith will get the first down and more. Shifting towards his right, a stiff arm. He's close to the goal line. He runs out of bounds about two or three yards shy. But now you're in an interesting territory. And obviously, you want to go for the touchdown. Smith. And yeah, one of the defenders grabbed and got the towel that was hanging out long off the back side of his jersey, and they were not happy as now they made him take it off. That thing was hanging down to his ankles. Yes. 6.5 seconds. If you don't get it here, that's if you run it. And a different quarterback in for Manchester, too. Fry will take the snap, lob it in the corner of the end zone, and he misses his man. That was Powell. Come on. Come on. Come on. Like so James, yeah. I guess James was out for a play. They had to bring in Fry as the emergency quarterback. Did his helmet pop off? 
I know you have to go off for that, but I'm not sure why else would they would take him off the field. Didn't see. But they will have to kick it with Mason. 20-yard field goal attempt. Just a chip shot. But before that... Got a whistle and... Not exactly sure what's going on. So you heard it right there. Too many men in formation for Franklin. So that puts it half the distance to the goal. Do they keep the field goal unit out there? Looks like yeah. right now they do. That's a good, good frame right there. Love that, Justin. Very nice. So instead of... 21 yards, it'll be 16 yards. And now you have a man off sides. And they missed it too. <laughs> Correction, it was actually a 19 yard field goal attempt and now it could be even shorter. I'd go for it, I really would. You can see some of the offensive players are huddling around Coach Jensen. They're going to take a timeout, it appears, too, to talk it over if they do want to go for it. The ball is on the two-yard line. I'm with you. I think you go for it. Yeah, I mean, if he, if he asks his players, you know what they're going to say. Let's go for it. Smith has done a great job so far today, and I, I, I would lean towards going for it because if you can go for it, get it and get a two-point conversion, you're only a field goal down at halftime, and you love that spot if you're Manchester. Not sure if there's enough time to get off a pass attempt, a really quick one. So you got to think, maybe Franklin has that in their minds, and they may sell out completely on the run. But you never know. Manchester fans now starting to stand up. Here we go. <laughs> Big play right here. James is still not out there. They have Peyton Fry. As the quarterback, Smith and Love also in the backfield. Yeah, I'm not sure why they don't have James out there. Fry takes the snap. Give is to Smith, but he didn't get there. Oh. Denied at the goal line. A huge stop to end the first half. Grizzlies coming up big. Manchester, no points. That's a huge play. 17 right there for Franklin. Got through. That's Bo Hess. Then Ojada came from behind. Bo Hess has been everywhere. The defense, huge for Franklin. After they gave up the big pass play to Powell, a couple of penalties forces Manchester away from kicking it. They try to go for it. They do not get it. But I, I, I like the decision to be like, you know, we got these two penalties, got two yards. Smith is running really well. Go for it. I still would be like to know why James wasn't under center there. But, uh, you know, that's one of those ones where you dial it up, see what happens, tip your cap to, to Franklin, and go in at halftime. And we'll make note of that also when the second half yes. comes our way to see if there's an issue with James, if they're going to continue to go with Fry, who's actually listed as a tight end. But he has come in. He's a senior and has tried to play that quarterback mm -hmm. position. So it's halftime, 17-6. to six, Our score in favor of the Grizzlies. McKinney had a 41-yard touchdown reception in the first quarter, and then Cora, keeping that offense balanced, scored from 13 yards out early on in the second quarter. That's the scoring for Manchester. The touchdown run by Smith was the first score of the game. It was a good start for the Manchester offense. But ever since then, a lot of punts. There you have the going for it. Close to the goal line and not getting it. But still, a whole 30 minutes left to play to decide this one. The Manchester offense has had some really good bright spots, especially 
running the football, Sean. They they may have to go away from that just a little bit more just because they're down, but they'll have to, to stick with it, I think, to keep their drives going. They've had a lot of success with Smith. They really have. Smith's been fantastic. Love's had some holes, too, and it's also opened up uh, uh, some passing opportunities for them as well. And, and you got to did a great job getting down the field in that short amount of time. But, you know, you rolled the dice on fourth down, and it didn't work out for you. But I think they feel pretty confident only being down two scores coming in at halftime against a team that's, uh, you know, three and one in the conference. Both teams are over 100 yards rushing and passing. They're sticking with their balance that they have seen throughout this season. But a couple of the weapons that we know of of Franklin that we alluded to in the pregame are definitely going to become factors as this game goes on. Both Cora running the football and then Gibson and McKinney have been two usual guys catching some passes from the quarterback, Kai Ross. That has allowed Grizzlies to go into the locker room with the halftime lead. 17-6 to is your score. We will step aside for our halftime break in the second half. We'll return after quite some time, about 15 minutes. And we will see the second half in our HCAC Game of the Week on HCAC.tv, powered by Indiana SRN. Go football fans, welcome back to Friday night. To pure spirit. To pure sport. Welcome back to high school football. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and I just want to say, welcome back! This is Friday Night. This is Indiana High School Football. This is your IHSAA. When I'm at a Super Bowl and I walk in that stadium at kickoff time, and I see that football sitting down there on that field, I get goosebumps because uh, I sewed that football. I am Jane Helser, I recently retired. I started working at Wilson on April 13, 1966. I was 19 years old. I put an application at Wilson. I got the job, never thinking that I'd be there for 48 years. I enjoyed what I did, so I just stayed. The Wilson Football Factory here, it's actually like a secret. I was raised about 20 miles from here and never even knew this place was here. We make NFL footballs year round. We manufactured the ball for every Super Bowl. And every point scored in the NFL since 1941 has been scored with a Wilson football. Jane was the longest tenured employee when she retired. I would get up at about 3.30 in the morning to be on the job at 5 a.m. I had to oil up my machine every day. I could sew about 150 footballs a day. A football is made from a big piece of leather. It's cut out like a cookie cutter, and that panel is uh, split down to a certain size. They're stamped with a logo, and then there's a lining that's put on it to hold the shape of the ball. When I get the football, it's in four panels. There's the top two panels. Those two are sewed together, leaving the opening. Then I sew the bottom two panels together. After the lace holes are punched and it, the seam are pounded down, then I sew the full section together. The rule of thumb is you don't make a good football sewer until you run a needle through your finger. One time the needle just slid up underneath the foot, stuck in my finger. They put an ice pack on it, took me to the doctor, he cut it out, and I went back to work the rest of the afternoon. I'm tough. <laughs> The turner gets the nice job of turning it right side out. Then it goes to the lacer, he or she, uh, puts a bladder in it and then laces it. After it goes to the lacer, it's molded. Then the ball is ready to be inspected. Sewing the football together is probably the most important quality as far as manufacturing. The ball has to have perfect seams. The ends have to line up perfectly. 
and therefore I think sewing is probably the most critical job in manufacturing the ball. We do not want to change the product in, the, in its total because the most important thing is the integrity of football. It's our thing's consistency, make a consistent product that feels the same to the player every time they pick it up. There's a cold swing. I tell people that I've been to nine Super Bowls, but I've never been to an Ohio State football game. <laughs> I've been to Miami twice, Tampa twice, Arizona twice, soon to be the third time, uh, New Orleans and Indianapolis. I'm just a worker that got a job when I was 19 years old and, and stayed there and was able to try to do the best job I could. And I've been rewarded greatly for it. All I ever wanted was to feel loved. He said he loved me. My friends told me it wasn't a big deal. They thought he was so cool, but they didn't know what he wanted me to do. All I ever wanted was to feel loved. You have no idea the kind of pressure I felt to take things to the next level. Things were moving so fast. I was basically the only person in the freshman class who hadn't done it yet. So, we did. I loved him. I thought she loved me. My health class had CPR at school. I stayed after class to talk with the instructor about it. They showed me that it didn't have to be that way. They showed me that I get to make my own choices. There is another way. That's the best thing CPR gives you. Another way. A better way. A healthy way. Sometimes you don't see it because you're in your own world. But they don't make you feel bad. They talk to you like a real person. And they save kids from really unhealthy decisions. They tell the truth and they know what they're talking about. So yeah, my life was different. I started to choose the better way. I honestly don't know where I'd be or what I'd be doing had it not been for CPR. Becoming a licensed sports official is a great way to make a positive difference in the community and support the over 160,000 Indiana student athletes that participate across 21 IHSAA sports. Sports officiating allows you to stay connected to the game, become a role model for our young student athletes, earn extra money, and support the patrons and communities of our IHSAA member schools. To learn more about becoming a licensed IHSAA official, log on to IHSAA.org slash officials today. It is halftime here at Spartan Stadium on Senior Day. Manchester currently trails Franklin 17-6. The Spartan band currently out on the field for halftime festivities before we get our second half rolling. We will step aside just one more time and come back with a special guest from the Manchester men's basketball team. So stay tuned for that. Your halftime score again, 17-6, Franklin on top here on Indiana SRN and HCAC.TV. Calling officials cheaters or corrupt, it's not a game. Insulting referees, it's not a game. Threatening officials, it's not a game. Berating young umpires, learning the ropes, it's not a game. Violent language in the stands, it's not a game. Verbal abuse from the sideline, it's not a game. 
screaming at a referee in the parking lot, it's not a game. Welcome back to Manchester University. Still halftime here. Franklin leads Manchester 17-6. to And we are ple pleasured to be joined by the head men's basketball coach of Manchester University, Nate Conley. Uh, Nate, first of all, thanks so much for joining us and taking the time. Beautiful venue, beautiful weather for senior day. How about uh, the turnout, first of all, for the Manchester fans, the Manchester faithful, putting on a, a pretty good performance showing off their city and their university? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're pretty fortunate uh, end of October to be having 65-degree weather and sunny. But, you know, one, one of the best parts about, you know, being part of this campus and this community is we get great support, um, again, from the campus, from the community. So, you know, last weekend at, at homecoming was a little bit bigger than, than what it was today. But, you know, honestly, all four of our home games, uh, home football games this fall have been great turnouts we seem to when we do these games we get to travel see all the different colleges in the HCAC we see a theme with coaches of baseball basketball they are coming to the football games in support they may have a role also up here in the press box do you also get the get the joy of having a, a role for any of these football games here at Spartan Stadium? Yeah, so I'm I'm on duty all the home football games, but but that's just kind of the type of place this is. You know, a lot of us wear different hats as coaches, and um, you know, um, we we would choose to show up and support each other. Coach Jensen's one of my one of my best friends on campus, so um, you know I follow him very closely and, and and support him in any capacity I can. But I actually am in charge of football game day management, so you guys actually got me out of some work at halftime <laughs> to come up here and, and have a conversation with you. So I appreciate it. And now talk about your role more specifically, how long you've been with the university, uh, just obviously being the men's basketball coach, you know, what things that you are also looking forward to in this upcoming season? Yeah, so I got hired in October of 2019, uh, three days before the season began. So, um, you know, I'm heading into my fourth season but I've been here for three years and uh, just really excited uh, you know heading into year four this is probably the most comfortable and confident I've been um, of, of the previous four pre-seasons heading into the year just with having more returning guys um, having three rounds of recruiting classes underneath my, myself and our coaching staff so uh, really excited for the basketball season ahead. Yeah brag about your guys also a little bit you have uh, more confidence like you said so you have those upperclassmen that are returning expectations for some of your guys on your squad this year? Yeah, we don't have as many upperclassmen as I'd like. We have zero seniors on our roster, oh, but wow. we return a sophomore and junior group that have been coached like juniors and seniors because they didn't have any other uh, option playing for me in, in, in their first two years coming in. So uh, we return a, a lot of experience and talent off of a team that finished with the six highest win percentage and the six most wins in, in a really competitive league a year ago. So returning that uh, a lot of experience while adding um, some new blood that's really talented and gives us some different dynamics and, and versatility makes this coach really excited to hit the season running. Very nice. And, you know, us being able to do these football games now, you know, we're getting into volleyball and soccer, everything else. We're hoping to do some basketball this year also. So we're hoping to check out uh, the arena, check out how things are going. What can we expect if someone, not just us, but someone, if they were to come to a Manchester basketball game, what what type of things can they expect to see? Yeah, and very similar to what you see out here today, we, we get great crowds, um, and we have a really unique setup. We have a, we have a low ceiling, and we've got curtains on, on the end of both baselines, so you put a 1,000 people in our stands jumping up and down, it literally sounds like 10,000 people when, when, when the Spartans are making a run. So um, we're really proud that we think we have one of the best home court advantages, um, you know, not just in our league, but but, but across Across you know, kind of the Midwest at the Division Three level, it's a it's a different atmosphere, and uh, I'm I'm excited to to kind of contribute and try to enhance the the community and campus support that our basketball program receives. Definitely. And what are the basketball players currently doing? What type of workouts are you guys going through to prepare for the start of the season? Yeah, so we just started practices on October 15th. So this morning we just had our 13th practice. We just had our first uh, preseason exhibition um, three nights ago. So, again, there's a lot of really encouraging things. Everyone's excited at this time of year, um, you know, but, but again, it's, it, it, there's, there's a buzz around this campus and around this basketball team, um, and, and I'm excited to, to, to see what, how that plays out. And, you know, we also, when we s go through these colleges, it's, it is a small-town 
feel? Very tight knit community. Do you feel that also? You, you, you said you're now you're in your third and fourth year. Does that seem to be growing? Whether it's with your team or with the community as a whole, everything seems to be coming more together in the in the years now that you have been here with Manchester. Yeah, and again, it's it's one of the reasons why this is a great fit for me and my family. The the, the support that you receive, like it, it really is unprecedented and unmatched. I mean, you know, people showing up an hour before the games just to watch warm up. You know, there's probably four different restaurants in town that it's a half hour to an hour wait just yeah. to get in after a basketball game because everyone's leaving to go get a bite to eat with their family and friends. So so again, I'm I'm really fortunate to be at a place that really values and cares about um, you know not just its students but but its student athletes from from a basketball standpoint very awesome very good to hear and speaking of food uh, Sean is buying uh, when we <laughs> leave here today so what spot are we hitting up uh, after the game well Sean's only buying because Keith's not here to run the tab <laughs> That's so right, yeah. um, on, honestly you can't go wrong at, at a few different places mr. Davis has great pork tenderloin um, Tammy will, will, will help you and give you the hookup you guys head over to the main view they have a really diverse menu great burgers wings bar food um, but but honestly there, there's 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 probably five or six places you guys could go to that you're going to leave happy. Awesome. All right. Sean, we got some options. Can't wait. Uh, might run up the tab just a little bit. But uh, Co uh, Coach Connolly, thanks so much for stopping by. We appreciate your time, and good luck the rest of the season. Yeah, thanks, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Coach Nate Connolly, the head men's basketball coach of Manchester University. Their season going to get started here just shortly. We will step aside. Second half is coming up after this on HCAC.TV. Back at halftime, it is Franklin College 17, the homestanding Manchester Spartans 6. Big fourth down stop for Franklin College as fourth and goal from the two for Manchester. Couldn't quite stick it in the end zone. Big play to end the first half. It has been an interesting football game here so far today as we try and See if we can get some other scores from around the conference. We do know that Mount St. Joseph was comfortably in the lead against Bluffton. And it, the, the score is currently halfway through the third quarter. Mount St. Joseph 56, Bluffton 21. And I believe those are the only games we've got. The cross-country championships took place today. And Rose Holman won the men's overall and the runner of the year was for Manchester, Connor Havens. So congratulations to those athletes as well. We'll have some volleyball on here this next week with the championships we've got with HCAC. And Jarrett, now that you're back from grabbing, you're, you're, you're going to make me pay, even though you just got a big plate of food up here <laughs> in the booth. I see how this works. That's all right. We'll still be hungry later, <laughs> right? <laughs> Your food will be cold by the time you hit the first break, but that's all right. <laughs> um, you know, as we assess the first the first half, it's it's an interesting it's an interesting half of football. Um, you know, David Smith they did a really good job of running the football. Did Manchester with Smith um, just couldn't quite stick in the end zone there at the end, but they did control the ball somewhat. It was the you know the the big pass plays for, for both squads that got him down. Franklin, however, was able to convert, and Manchester wasn't. That's exactly right. And, and before we went to the break, we mentioned how Manchester still has to keep up with that running game. They can't become one-dimensional, even though you're down. And especially if you go down again, because Franklin is receiving the second-half kickoff with their 11-point lead. Make sure you're still trying to control the game the best you can. Give your defense a lengthy break. Keep that running game going as best as you can. And you're going to have to pick up some more big plays. You you lost your receiver early in the game in Levar, Levar Leisure, and you saw that big play happen with Powell. You're going to need, I think, a little bit more of those types of plays uh, for the second half to keep your team in it. I think that's definitely 
an, an issue. But of the times we've been up in, I think this is our fourth time at Manchester. I think this is the best I've ever seen them throw the football in, in terms of their, their offensive output. So I think that's something they can hang their head on and maybe use it to their advantage in the second half a little bit. But they got to get a stop first as Franklin set to take the opening kickoff. Gibson back to receive along with Derek Thompson. It'll head towards Gibson's way in the second half. Has begun. Gibson, pretty good return. Wrapped down at the 35. That's where the Grizzlies will begin their second half. First half numbers for Franklin. They had 12 first downs, 101 yards rushing, 113 yards passing the football. Just two penalties, three penalties altogether. The referees have had a quick and mostly quiet first half. Franklin was 5 of 8 on third downs. And Ross in that first half going 11 of 17 throwing the football. They'll begin with Cora. A tough run for three. And that kickoff, Jerry will appreciate this. That kickoff looked like a three iron going down the field. It was a line drive and returns that it came up and you kick it that low and that quick. You got to let your coverage team get down there. A good starting position for Franklin. Ross in the usual shotgun. Cora started left and cut things back in between the hashes. Close to a first down, just one yard shy at the 44. This, this duo, if you will, of Ross and Cora, both from Tri-West, but both sophomores. That's a huge advantage for Coach Hensel. In his, he's in his third year here at Franklin. To have these two young men for two more years after this year, speaking of Coach Hensel, 13 and 11 in his third year, 11 and 7 in conference. Another run, doesn't go far, but it is enough to move the sticks. That was Cora again. Cora's numbers in that first half. 15 carries for 50 yards rushing and a touchdown. He never looks like he gets tired. Oh, that's what impresses me most about Cora. Runs just as hard in the fourth as he does in the first. Four straight runs to begin the second half for Garrett. He has four yards here. Sometimes we'll see Derek Thompson cycle in, and he was back in on that kickoff return, but have not seen him in the backfield this afternoon. Yeah, Manchester's defensive line trying to switch it up a little bit, bringing DJ GJ Joss in. If I can talk, DJ Doss, a junior from Indianapolis, Indiana, the alma mater of Keith Myers. How high school? How about that? Yeah. First pass of the second half. Ross deep down the field. Gibson beats his man, and he's tackled down at the 10. Gain of 40 yards. Grizzlies in another good position to extend their lead. That's what the running game will do for you. It will open up opportunities as the linebackers have to be aware of running. And just like that, Gibson got behind the defender. Great ball by Ross to put it right on him. Not another scoring opportunity for Franklin. Fifth catch of the afternoon for Gibson. Nearly a touchdown scored by Jennings. Jennings getting some looks today, more, and more so than Thompson on offense, which is, is interesting, but he, Jennings has looked good. Cora does the heavy work, and now Jennings yeah. <laughs> is in there as the goal line back. Like, oh, wait, wait, coach, you ride me all the way down the field, and we get to the goal line, you bring somebody else in? I need some love in the end zone. Well, he did... He did run for an 11 yard touchdown in the first half, so he's got that going for him. Jennings stays out there. Stretch give. Good tackle made by Manchester's Jose Castro. Run to the left side behind Ethan Corwin and Justin Case in that offensive line. Corwin, 6'4, 230 junior from Seymour High School, and Justin Case, a 5'11 senior, 280 from Westfield. 
letting the Hogs take over. Jennings on the right side of Ross, who looks to pass over the middle of the field. Caught. Touchdown, Franklin. Beautiful play there. Thalape has the touchdown reception. D Dawson with his second catch this afternoon. He had one for 10 yards earlier, and this one was just a few yards less. And now Franklin leads 23-6 to six with the PAT pending. Bolden. Two for two so far. Now make it three for three. 18 point lead for Franklin. They score early in the third. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. Eight plays, 65 yards, three minutes and 48 seconds. Tap, capped off by a two-yard touchdown pass from Ross to Delape. It's 24-6, to six, Franklin, and that's exactly what you wanted if you're Coach Hensel coming out to start the third quarter, take that kickoff and stick it in the end zone. And maybe why they opted to defer on the coin toss to start off this game. A pretty decent first half of play. You put up 17 points, and then your first drive of the second half, you find the end zone again, and good kickoff coverage right here also. Spartans will begin at the 22-yard line. See the touchdown pass, just a quick hitter, and the defender was there, but he put it in a great spot, and Delape went up and got it. And if Manchester ever needs a solid drive and put it in the end zone, it's it's got to be now. I know we talk about certain drives being important, but this might be the utmost important drive of the game for Manchester. Franklin drive took almost four minutes off the clock. A little reverse action with Cam Hall on the end around, and Ooh. Hall takes a big lick from Bo Hess. We've called his name multiple times tonight. But that play was made by Gervasio Mitchell. Who, who stayed in his lane, and he saw them coming around. He didn't bite on Smith coming to the left side. He played his his assignment and held him up for Bohes to come in and make the tackle. Let me see the line, two. Let me see the line. Second and nine. That's a good shot, but I need to James see is back out there at quarterback. This time they'll go in between the tackles with Smith. A little bit more success, but it's only a three-yard pickup. So an early third down situation here for Manchester. Isaac Lawrence on that tackle, a D lineman. Stuck his nose in there. Pivotal moment here for the Spartans. You, you just can't go three and out and give the ball back to Franklin after they took it down and stuck it in the end zone. Third down and six. Smith on the right side of James. He has two receivers to the left. Short of the sticks, the catch is made, but it's two yards short. Clayton Sheckles at the catch. His first attempt of anything. Man, that's, that's got to drive any coach crazy as you look at that play. And no matter the level, you have got to run that route past the first down marker. It does you no good to run it short of the sticks. It really doesn't. And it took a while to set up, so it gave, you know, Kahari Jackson plenty of time to get over there to make the tackle. And now they're punting. A short end-over-end -end punt. 
That gets knocked down by Manchester at the 41-yard line. So not only do you not convert on the third down, but you give Franklin back the football with more great field position. Yeah, he didn't even get a chance to flip the field, as you'll see here. This was from the first half, the big play yeah, to Powell. Huge play. Oh, it's a telemetry. He got up to 19 miles an hour. Very nice. How long would it take you to get up to 19 miles an hour? <laughs> I guarantee you would take less time than it would take me. They're going to need some more but big that, but plays that's not like saying that. much. <laughs> <laughs> Manchester will need a little bit more of that from Powell and a few other guys. Here's Cora up the middle. I, I like that they took a chance with the first play and you did the double reverse kind of thing, but just a great play by Gervasio Mitchell to... to Stay in his assigned spot and blow that play up. If you can get five yards a chunk with Garrett Cora. I'll take that all day. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Ross forced out. Does tuck it. Does pick up two. Ross running the football today. He's... Completion percentage pretty good right at 68, but running it has had four attempts now for 33 yards. Well, for the season, he's at 57% completion rate, so he does a great job with that. Don't forget, we got we got the cookies back from, from Debbie. We got to start thinking about a player of the game, That's too, right. as it's going along. These teams look forward to these cookies now. It's it's an important task we have. Kai Ross won player of the game when we saw them face Anderson, and now Ross feeling the heat. He's going to be sacked for the first time. Getting in there for the Spartans, Marvin Collins, number 21. I like the thought of dialing up some pressure they did there. Now Franklin has to punt, and here's a chance for you to flip the field position in your favor if you get a short punt and a good return. Defense of Manchester picking up their offense here. Punt from Boswell. Spiraling punt. Fair catch called for at the 34-yard line. Spartans will get another crack at it. So we are a little over halfway through quarter number three. Let's see if we can find some more scores in the Heartland Conference from today's game. Oh my goodness. 63-21 Mount St. Joseph up on Bluffton. I am not seeing any other football scores. We haven't seen any other scores with... Uh -uh. Anderson playing and I will I will look for specific schools. We will let you know about how those games are going. They all had their 130 kickoffs most likely. We got our kickoff pushed back to two o'clock. David Smith drops for a loss of one. Let's see. Uh, third quarter, Rose Holman leads Defiance 69 to 21. Nice. Yeah. So obviously, Rose Holman and Mount St. Joseph heading towards 5 and 0 in the conference. Let's see if we can find Hanover. Meanwhile, David Smith picking up the yard he lost and a couple of more. Third and eight. Manchester is sticking with the run game, but Franklin selling out. Their middle backers, including Charlie Moore. Jake Jones has been active on the defensive line. Could force Manchester into a passing situation here, and again... Not much to talk about with James throwing the football. 8 of 16. He did have the long pass play to Powell. And we'll have to talk it over a little bit more. Third down and 8 when we return to Spartan Stadium. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, 
Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. Out of the timeout, Spartans and their offense. Needing to talk things over. A huge third down upcoming right here. Hmm. Two receivers to the left for James. He looks that way. Corner route and not on the same page. Cam Hall had stopped on his route. Gabe Melvin was also in the area and he was overthrown. By the way, the other score, Hanover 48, Anderson 3. So we've got the closest game here, 24-6. We've got some blowouts yeah. in the other three HCAC games. By the way, if you want to see anything from the conference, HCACDIII -I -I on Twitter. That's D3, but Roman numerals. You know, we can't overlook because this punt is nearly blocked. It's the best punt so far. Mm -hmm this afternoon for Manchester. Gibson calls for the fair catch. We can't overlook next Saturday's game with Hanover and Rose Holman. Hanover could very well shake things up just a little bit. Hanover offensively this year has been a lot stronger than they were last year. They had some games where they'd look really good and then they'd struggle, but this is going to be, dare I say, a shootout. It's going to be up and down the field. I'd love to see a track meet. I'm all for that. Scoring offenses. Rose is number two, Hanover number three in the conference. Cora sure. is bottled up for a one yard gain. I'll make sure and bring my track shoes next week. <laughs> I'll be ready to go. Actually identical basically in scoring. Rose averages 35, Hanover 34. I don't know if, if Jerry noticed how your mood changed once I told you Notre Dame won. Yeah. <laughs> Back to being a football school. <laughs> That changes week to week? Yeah, pretty much. We lose to the marshals of the world and whoever else. One in five Stanford. It's okay. Replay of this. Wilburn, yep. Tharp Franklin has a third down. Yeah, Tharp trying to make a block out there to spring him. A good, good job by the Spartans to hold him up. Yeah, you got to get Franklin off the field here. Ross takes the snap, three-step drop, slam over the middle, trying to go back to his man in Winburn, but it's incomplete. Back-to-back -back stops by the Manchester defense. Good throw. Pro you know, any good receiver will tell you if it hits my hands, I should catch it. And that's what he will tell you. And that good route, good pass just didn't work out. So now maybe a big special teams play is what the doctor ordered for Manchester. Let's see what they can dial up here. And they have an athlete back there to return in Powell. Boswell with another quick trip back onto the field a little bit of pressure brought by the Spartans a high punt and Powell I don't know if he lost it but it landed right next to him still fielded at the 16 most Franklin punts have gotten great movement coming back into the field instead of heading towards the end zone Boswell has quite the boot on him and he continues well, wait, wait, to make that, things that's hard that's a soccer term come on now alright he's got a cannon of a leg there as you Pat go. McAfee would say Thunder thighs? No, that's not right. For the brand. Yeah. He, he, we saw him in pregame and he was just hitting bombs. Makes things hard for Manchester. They're at the 16. 
Needing something to go their way offensively. They have not scored since their second possession of the game way back in the first quarter. Smith and a couple of offensive linemen get pushed backwards. That's a loss of three. Great job by that front four of Franklin stringing the play out and letting the linebackers and DBs come in and make plays. Coach Hensel in on the action, going over things with his guys on the offensive side of the football. This has not been the nowhere near the best offensive game we've seen from Franklin, but still able to put up 24 points mm -hmm. on the scoreboard. And your defense is more than enough doing their part. Smith loses his helmet, so he'll have to exit for one play. Yeah, you lose your lid, you gotta come sit for a play. No penalties yet in the second half either. We only had three total. It's unbelievable. And just as I say something. Curse. Oh, what a catch. Oh, oh, oh. Did he get his feet down? He did. What an acrobatic snag made by mm. Gabe Melvin. James looks worse for wear down there too. Just as I said something about penalties, Ojada had jumped off sides, and that gave a free play to Manchester. And then James took a tough lick on the back end. Oh, yep. oh it's the guy that jumped off sides, too. You would have how about they the would, catch by Melvin? You would have thought they would have went unabated to the quarterback. There are two fouls on the play on the defense. Offside, number two, that penalty declined. Roughing the passer, number 58. That penalty will be assessed 15 yards to end the run. So a good catch by Melvin. They tack on 15 more due the, to the roughing the passer call. That was on Jake Jones. <laughs> and that'll force James for the sideline. He's still roughed up. So they do bring in Fry again. He was the one that was out there for the past couple of plays to end the second quarter. Oh, Ojada right there, my goodness. Ojada continues to put on a clinic. The quarterback actually is Colin Turner. He wears number nine, meanwhile Fry is number eight. Something to keep in mind here too, next week Manchester travels to Defiance for a conference game. And Franklin hosts Mount St. Joseph. Should be an exciting wrap-up of HCAC play. Yeah, Defiance got their first conference win and their new coach, a, his first victory last week. Deep heave down the field, going back oh. to Melvin, who had a step, but just slightly overthrown by Turner. He is behind the defender. A little less on it, and that would have been six. That could have been a huge play. What a momentum shifter that could be also for Manchester. Yeah, great route there by Melvin, getting behind the defender. Just couldn't quite run under. James back in. We saw him. They were given a test where it looked like it was a, a concussion test. So he passed. Appears to be good enough to be back out there on this third and 11. Pressure brought by Franklin. They bring six. Getting rid of it, but it's off his hands. Cam Hall would have had a first down and plenty more after. Ball was a little high, but again, just like we talked about in the last Franklin possession, receivers all believe if they get their hands on it, they should catch it. And, and that. So now they gotta, they're at the 50-yard line. Can they flip the field enough to pin them deep? As you watch the ball here, it's a good ball. It's a little high, but he put, it where, he put it where his guy could get it. You just got to go catch it. An unfortunate end to that drive for Manchester. This punt is away. Gibson 
Hauls it in at the 24. Three possessions, but nothing to show for it for the Spartans. Even after starting deep in their own territory, they get it out to midfield, but cannot continue. And they're starting to get away from the run game a little bit. Yeah, and it's interesting, too, is Franklin only had five possessions in the first half. This is their fourth in the second half. We're not even through the third quarter yet. Grizzlies have scored in this quarter. The touchdown catch by Delape. Garrett Cora continues to be on the receiving end. I, I feel I have a feeling Cora was, subscribes to the theory of low man wins. Is when he gets near defenders, you can just see him get low. And that allows him to get an extra yard or two. And, and in a game or in a drive, that'll add up positively for your squad. 22 carries, 72 yards for Cora has been the workhorse. I'm not sure he could get lower than the the quarterback we had last night. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> in our high school game. He was down in a catcher stance. Yes, he was. Oh, his own lineman tripped him up. Cora gets tripped up back to the original line of scrimmage. And that lineman you talked about, Brock Veach from Mount Vernon, Indiana. Big right tackle is Beach. That right side of the offensive line, which we were impressed with when we saw them a few weeks ago when they played Anderson. Yes. But between Veach and Amarni Christopher, they are both 6'4 and 6'5. Mountains of men. Yeah. It makes you wonder if they're the runts of the litter. If they're the runts, then that's a... It's a movie joke for one, but uh, second, <laughs> I'd hate to see the rest of their family. Ross, clean pocket again. Here's McKinney. McKinney escapes the first guy towards midfield, tackled inside the yellow circle. Needed 10, and he got about 18. So they ran the routes to the outside, the outside of the field. He just went in that middle spot, the, the soft part of the zone. Nobody was there. Nobody close to him except his defender. And then after that, he had to wait for people to get there. It's a great play call by Franklin. Ross again to throw. Pocket collapses on him. McKinney is wide open near sideline. Did he step out? He did after the reception, though. Again, nobody within five yards of him. they got to be careful. This Manchester. McKinney got 22 on the last catch, and right there he got about 11. So back-to-back -back snags for number three. And that'll be the final play of the third quarter. Only points up on the scoreboard come from Franklin, so they extend their lead from halftime up to 24-6, to six, trying to spoil the senior day here at Spartan Stadium. Fifteen minutes left to decide this one. So far it has been all Grizzlies, especially the Grizzlies defense, putting any sort of stop to an offensive possession by Manchester. Looking to add more to it right here. They're at the Spartans 41. Got to get a stop here. I know I've said that numerous times. Ross... Tough pass to make with the defender draped all over him on his back. Castro, he's been active in the secondary for Manchester. Manchester's done a better job, especially in the second half towards the end of the first half, of getting pressure on Ross and forcing him out of the pocket. But Ross has been so good about making plays or getting rid of the football and, and not making uh, plays that lead to turnovers or bad plays. 
Joel, give me the offensive line at the same time. Cora bounces things towards the outside. Taken down after a three-yard pickup. Have we had any turnovers yet in this game? Two. I don't think we have. I don't think so either. We had no fumbles. Punts, a turnover on downs. No. No interceptions. Very few penalties. Clean game. Four penalties total. One in the second half. That's that's incredible. Ross Gibson. It's tipped. We nearly had a turnover did right there. Did he catch there. that? He caught that. How did he catch that? I think he batted it to himself. Holy cow. It's enough for a first down, <laughs> too. That, that's complete to 21 and 21 and 21. Tip, bat, get it. And for those of you that don't know, like in football, if both the receiver and the defender come down with it, it goes to the, the receiver. Did they give him the first down on that? They did. Oh, okay. Watch it again. It's a fastball. Just as we were talking about turnovers, there nearly was one there, but Gibson sticks with the play. Cora right here has six yards. Number two, Eric Cora on the carry. I've never been the biggest fan of if both guys have it, the receiver gets it all the time. Except when it's like Monday Night Football and the Seahawks mm. and Packers and the Packers lose, then I'm okay <laughs> with it. But outside of that. With the replacement run. <laughs> one says touchdown, one says turnover. Fail Mary, in other words. Yes. That was back when Russ was cooking. Yeah, and Wolverine's blood was working out well. Cooking right here for another first down. Taking everybody with him. Spencer Wright. And they are talking. Players are introducing themselves to each other. And now some hurry up offense. Manchester shuffling guys around. Three receivers set to the top. That's where Ross looks towards the end zone. It's picked off. Interception, toe tapping around the goal line with the pick, Jamal Hubbard. He the did first not time. see Hubbard. No, he did not. The first, and then we get a late flag thrown too. We talked about the chippiness picked up, and here it is right here. We hadn't mentioned Hubbard's name at all since pregame. That, that's post possession, so. But you watch him, he's spying. It gets open, just doesn't see him. He thought he wasn't going to get in the end zone, so he ran it out. And then after the play, couldn't see much there, but we'll get the official word here. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 15, that penalty says half the distance, and that's 15 spurs, unsportsmanlike conduct call of the game. So Hubbard, after getting the pick, may have had some choice words. You can't do that. After a big play like that, I think he was, was. Hubbard's on the ground, and oh, maybe something said to the official. He yeah. he didn't like what happened with. Looked like Amani Christopher, the offensive lineman, coming over to talk to him, and then Hubbard maybe the reaction. That's usually what the officials will get. It's always a second guy. A much-needed turnover, though, the first of the game by either team. Smith, they're trying to get him going again, but he only has a yard. It's always got me growing up. I was always, I was, well, <laughs> I hope my siblings aren't watching this. I was the instigator, but still. <laughs> you had brothers, though. One. I had one older brother who was bigger than me, so I got beat up a lot. And then I had two younger sisters, and I had nobody to beat up myself. So <laughs> it was it was rough. James Ooh. Powell has to go up and get it. It's a decent game, but it'll bring up third down at the 14-yard line. Boy, he floated that up there. He's lucky that the DB didn't recognize that route earlier and get a pick six. Powell becoming the leading receiver this afternoon for Manchester. That's his fourth catch. 
Paul and Fry each have two. Boy, James is going to be sore in the morning. He is taking shots. Swing things out. Smith, one-handed snag. But gang tackled five different Franklin Grizzlies. Bring him down. That for no gain. <laughs> was pretty. It was just like a, oh. And it stuck right in his hand, and now he's down on the sideline. Might be those light blue gloves that he has on. But unfortunately, Smith still down on the ground after being gang tackled. I think we have a dilemma. Oh, here we go. Ross. Deep pass. The deep catch made by Gibson. 16.3. I think Gibson's 40 times, probably a little bit quicker than five flat, I would have to assume. Yeah. So Smith is up, holding his arm kind of around his wrist, maybe. Well, the shoulder was what got leisure. He hasn't been back since. And now the punt again, thank you to Telemetry Sports. It's like the technology nowadays, you know, the fact that they can, we can have an ad that talks about autonomous vehicles. <laughs> it's just like, is this like, you don't even know who the Jetsons are, the cartoon. I know Jerry does. And over in punt, very short. Gibson was immediately waving for a fair catch at the 40-yard line. A little over four minutes gone by in this fourth quarter. Exchanging punts, mostly in the second half. And Franklin, again, with really good <laughs> field position to start Sorry. here. Jerry, Jerry's singing the Jetsons theme. We all know it from when we were kids. <laughs> <laughs> His boy, Elroy. Where does that rank amongst TV it's, it's, theme it's songs? It's a good one. It's a good one. It's a great, one, a great cartoon as well. Cora thrown down. Good pursuit. And the stop, Marvin Collins. Marvin Collins, the senior from Riviera Beach, Florida. I think Jetsons might be a top ten cartoon of all time for me. What's number one? You got to know. Oh, one. easy. I know what that one is. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll save that. But the defenses have both played well this afternoon. I don't get to know what your number one. No, I mean, it's called a tease. Come on, Jarrett. <laughs> Sorry, just a little impatient. <laughs> Bat it down. No, Ross Oh, he hit. on the pump fake, I think. I was trying to follow the ball, but Ross does scamper forward for yards. Yeah, I didn't know if that was a pump fake or if it, was it batted back to him. I don't know. Um, it's actually not a cartoon from my generation. It's from one of my sons were growing up. Let's take a look and see if he actually throws it. He did. Yeah. It got batted back to him. And you can see the D lineman kind of looking around. That was on the deflection for Manchester. Big number 97. Ross in traffic nearly picked off again. It should have been. But through the hands of Justin Major. I think with the, oh, they're going to punt it. I figure with the way your defense is playing, go for it. But Okay, two go down and get the receiver. They won't go on it. Fourth and nine. Uh, it is Kim Possible. Oh, yes. I see. I I dabbled with Kim Possible yes. a little bit back in my day. My uh, my my wife and my oldest son's text noise is the oh. do, 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 do still. Yeah, yeah I still. know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Pal, no fair catch. She'll get a couple of yards after the reception. <laughs> Manchester Band still here, trying to get something rolling, but it's you're running out of time just a little bit. A lot of empty possessions in the second half. Jerry would know one of, another one of my favorite ones. Johnny Quest was a great cartoon growing up. And there's always Looney Tunes. I mean, you can't go wrong. Yeah. I loved. I. I I enjoy lovable dorks. George Jetson, Daffy Duck, Ron Stoppable. I kind of have a 
an affinity for those guys. Not much on the Flintstones, though. I don't know why. I can't explain it. I just like the vitamins. <laughs> those were good. They did a great job marketing it because the kids were like, ooh, it tastes like candy. And the parents were like, it's a vitamin. <laughs> <laughs> it's a win-win. Exactly. Could just pop those things in all day. Now they're taking creatine and all kinds of stuff. Mm. This is love. Oh, love, yeah. Had a hole, but it's closed down. Good tackle made by Devin Keith, freshman from Danville High School. I do love how these running backs, like, you can see with love there, like, he put his hand on the back of his offensive lineman and is like, all right, big fella, I'm following you. Like, they don't get too far ahead of themselves to give themselves an opportunity for a big hitter because Manchester needs that right now. They're still not out of this game. They're going to have to move, hurry, and convert on their third downs. Middle of the field. That one is snagged down for the first down. Good connection. James. And that catch made by Abiagum. Uh, this is the best I've seen Manchester throw the ball since we've been here two years. Abiagum, yeah. Passing game has picked up with James. We'll have to continue with it. Out to Hall. He's their athlete in space, but wrangled around, and he steps out of bounds after a one-yard pickup. Man, couldn't quite get the block on the outside there from his wide receiver. Great defensive play by Kahari Jackson to fight off the defender and make the tackle. Bring a man in motion. Love heads the other way with a couple of pulling off its alignment, but now reverses course and tackle from behind. A huge loss. Tackle made by Demarion Newell, sophomore from Gary Westside in hot pursuit. I don't think we've seen Smith this series at all, have we? I don't think so. It's been all love. Smith is, we can see him. Is that him? I mean, there's two, probably two number ones, aren't there? There is. I'm not sure where Smith is located. Another Another third five. down. This is third and 14. They're not going to get the playoff. Flag comes flying in, but did they get the timeout? Looks it. like it. Yep. Coach Jensen there to burn a timeout, and they'll have a third down and very long when we return. Myers, Vice President of Indiana SRN. Thanks for joining us. You know Indiana SRN broadcasts 350 games a year. All sorts of sports. Yeah, we do. Hard to believe, isn't it? Indiana SRN loves to put student athletes first on our website. If you're a business out there, we probably could help you too. Contact us at coach at indianasrn.org. Grandma from out of state thanks you. Mom and dad who can't get to the game thanks you as well. In fact, our athletes watch the games over and over again. Our military has enjoyed the games as well. So sit back and enjoy the game. It's Indiana SRN. So out of the timeout, Spartans have their play. Two receivers, both left and right. Defense starts to creep up from Franklin. And that one, a couple of guys in the area could have been picked off by two or three yeah. different players, but none of them able to get the interception. They're like, you took it from me. <laughs> no, you took it from me. That was my ball. Yes. The most famous one that I remember is the the Auburn-Georgia game a few years ago. 
the uh, the miracle of Jordan Hare, where the George, both Georgia defenders went up to mm -hmm. intercept it. They both tipped it, and it went into the receiver's hands as he kept running. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. That was the year of the disgusting kick six. That was back when Auburn was good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're not a football school anymore. <laughs> no. This punt, again, right at midfield. Franklin can just utilize their beast in the backfield, being Garrett Cora. Try to wind down the rest of the 623. Yeah, we got to start thinking about a player of the game here. We got, we got a lot of candidates today. We sure do. And between Cora being kind of the workhorse, he's not out there at the moment. It's Jennings. I mean, McKinney's had a good game. McKinney has had a good game. Defensively, we need to look at the stats because their defense has played really well, too. Newell has 10 total tackles, one of them for a loss. How about three tackles for a loss assists? I didn't know that was a stat. I did not know that was he either. He assisted on three tackles for loss. Something to mull over. No sacks for the Franklin defense, but Ojada has had three quarterback hits applied to the Manchester quarterbacks. All right. We will weigh our options. We we'll will. get some, uh, some input from producer Jerry as well. Jennings. Good yards here. Our cameraman up top also, Justin Griffiths and Joel Mears capturing our shots yes. this afternoon. Fantastic job. We are going to have to make a decision. We've reached the, the five-minute mark. Yeah, we have. We have. We won't announce it until about the three minutes, right? Three-minute mark? Yeah, we'll do that. So, yeah. Maybe we can even a little input from some other people up here in the booth as to what they think. Jennings again. Runs into a brick wall. That's trying to get an extra push. It will be enough for a first down. I think that wasp wants it. <laughs> Looking at the cookies right next to you. Is this the place where we've seen them? Because we've been here a couple of times, and we've seen think, a lot of bugs. I think Defiance is, is probably the biggest one. Some jackets and wasps and whatever it bees, yeah. whatever else is up here. I think the most the most kills I've had in the game might have been Bluffton. <laughs> <laughs> As you hear Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get a couple of kills of his own. On first down, Jennings. He's going to be the one to try and finish out this drive running the football. All right, I'm going to go radio silent because I'm since we have no sideline reporter I'm going to be the one to go down there and just like that we can discuss who it's going to be injured player down on Manchester sounds like a plan not exactly sure who was out but we will take a break and come back every person has a story waiting to be told Mr. Jack comes in every Monday. Yeah, that's right. One day I noticed his hat said he was a Korean War veteran. I asked him if he'd ever been to the Korean War Memorial. No, I never had a chance to go. That was the day I knew we had to do whatever it took to get him there. Man, he made it happen. I got to go to Washington, D.C. to all the memorials. The World War II Memorial, Naval Memorial, Korean War Memorial. Took all kind of pictures and everything. And it was a good trip, too. I'm glad that I could be a part of Mr. Jack's story. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at IndianaSRN. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. Clock continues to wind after the injury timeout. Franklin has a second and five. They started this drive at the six and a half minute mark. 
and they will let the play clock get down as low as it can. Currently at five. Ross with the snap. Jennings takes one hit, and then the second guy able to bring him down. No gain. Third down. Franklin will move on, win this game, and be 4-1 and one in conference play. Their lone loss coming last week to Rose Holman. Meanwhile, Manchester drops to 0-5 in the HCAC 1-7 overall. Manchester next week will match up with Defiance. That's a road game. As for Franklin, they will return home and play one of those schools at the top of the HCAC in Mount St. Joseph. Jennings close to a first down. It'll be fourth and short. And we are very much excited about next week's games that we have for you. Sectional finals in high school football next Friday, and then after that a jam-packed Saturday with both men's and women's soccer. Those championships. The women are at Hanover, the men at Rose Holman. And then our game of the week is Rose Holman at Hanover. Tony Donahue and Sean Kroll will be making that travel down to see the Fighting Engineers and the Panthers. Jennings, this first down, will most certainly ice it. A replay back at one of the touchdowns for Franklin. This was the lone score that we have seen in the second half. It was the catch by Dawson Delapi, the sophomore. And now just 90 seconds left to wrap this one up for the Grizzlies. Also forgot to mention next Saturday, volleyball semifinals at Transylvania. Game at two and a game at five down in Kentucky. This carry for Cameron Johnson. And a couple of substitutions out there for Franklin. There's the women's soccer, the six teams that remain there for next Saturday. Also the men's soccer next Saturday as well. Getting down to championship weekends to wrap up HCAC play across all fall sports. That could be the very last play of the game. Both teams starting to line up at midfield. Low scoring affair. The Grizzlies able to put up more points than what they did usually, but all they needed was 24 to down the Spartans and spoil their senior day. Manchester falls to 0-5 in conference play. Franklin is now 4-1 in the HCAC. They win it 24-6 over the Spartans. Some final numbers offensively. Kai Ross, the quarterback, 19 of 29. Two touchdown passes and the one interception. He hooked up with Dylan McKinney. And also Dawson DeLape back in the third quarter. Those two were the touchdowns. McKinney, five catches, 85 yards. Jared Gibson, six catches for 80 yards. Spencer Wright added three for 22. Garrett Cora, the workhorse. Only ended up with 2.7 yards per carry, but finished with 26 attempts and 71 yards on the ground, keeping that Franklin offense balanced. Defensively for Franklin, led in tackles 10 total by Demarion Newell. Four solo tackles, three tackles for loss that he assisted on. One solo tackle for a loss. And who knows, he very well could be our player of the game. In fact, 
He is. We've reached a conclusion. Demarion Newell, defensive back, just a sophomore from Gary West side. He is our HCAC player of the game here in week number five. There he is. That's the man. Sean's got the goodies. Franklin will have a quick meeting in the end zone. Coach Hensel, proud of his guys and especially the defensive effort that they saw. But before that, I think they'll have to sing towards their loyal fans. They're running away from the cookies. They're, they're the other way. Franklin fans, pretty good turnout, and they saw a win from Franklin today. 24-6 is our final score for our entire crew. Our cameraman up top, Joel Mears and Justin Griffiths, our producer, Jerry Collins, and our other announcer, Sean Kroll, who's making the special delivery right now. I'm Jared Lewis. So long for now. You are watching Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference football on Indiana SRN. <laughs>